Hello, with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com, and today I'm going to tell you my easy, no tads way of uprighting a usually a lower second molar. Um, it works for me without fail as long as two conditions are met. Number one, the third molar has to be gone. Can't be erupted, can't be impacted, needs to be gone out and everything. Number two, a little bit, a partial, at least, at least 30% or 20% of that molar needs to be above the gum line. You need to see some tooth structure. It cannot be completely below. So if you've got a situation where it's completely below, get the third molar out first, give it six to 12 months, see if it kind of comes up on its own. You can always take off some of the gum. You can do an exposure to expose that and you can still try this, but it's less likely to be successful if you have to go in there and dig around, okay? So um, if it is like completely 90 degrees, is probably not gonna happen. So, I mean, it's gotta be like somewhere in the neighborhood of 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 degrees, you know, angulated. So um, that's kind of the conditions. And obviously it can't be ankylosed. So you need to do your dentistry or, or take a CBCT and have it read to make sure it's not ankylosed. It's gonna work better if the apices are not closed. And, you know, something like, obviously this is not super impacted, but you can see this. I don't want the seven or the second molar fully developed. The more fully developed it is, the less likely this is going to work, okay? So this is ideal in around an 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 year old. After that, the prognosis tends to go down. All right, so you can do this without TADS, not a problem, as long as all these qualifications are met. And you can go into Invisalign afterwards. Um, you can do this just with a little lower appliance, you know, sh widget shimmy thing, <laughs> thingamabob, um, before you put on braces, um, if you're going to do braces, or you can do it at the same time as braces, or you can just do this little widget thingamabob only on the lower, upright it, and then you can go into Invisalign to finish it off later once you get it pretty good. So not a problem, done it many times. We used to do this in residency. Now we used to make them ourselves <laughs> and solder them. They, they were called cantilevers. We were trained by Burstone, Char Charlie Burstone himself back in the 90s, oh, 2000s actually. Um, I was there, 2001 to 2004. I was on the tail end of his career and it was amazing the stuff he could do with just bending wire. But nowadays you don't have to bend wire, you can order it. So the one I like is called a Halterman appliance and this is my really bad drawing of one, but you can Google it to look it up on, a, like some labs make it, Halterman, H-A-L-T-E-R-M-A-N. This is a band that goes on the six or the first molar, okay? If you do not have braces on the rest of the teeth, if you have braces on the rest of the teeth, you're gonna wanna be in a heavy steel wire at this point. So you're gonna need to work your way up to this. If you do not have braces on the rest of the teeth, you can put in a lingual arch. That means this is gonna be one of the bands of a lingual arch. The lingual arch is gonna reach around, all the way around to a band on the other side. You're gonna need some type of stability um, so that is why you either need to be in a lingual arch with this halterman and appliance soldered on it, or you can be in full braces in a heavy 1925 wire if you're an 022 slot or an 1825 wire if you're an 018 slot steel. Um, and it'll go into the molar band here. This is a cantilever that reaches around with a little hook. And this is a button on your second molar, which is tipped. And this is one or two units of power chain. This is gonna be activated. You actually have to bend it in order to reach this little hook, in order to reach the unit of power chain. And it's going to provide an extrusive and distal force in order to upright it. Now, if this starts to get caught on the band, um, if the seven starts to get caught in the band, you might have to start using the spacer technique. I have individual videos about the Halterman technique and the spacer technique in my YouTube channel, so you can dig into those a little bit more. It does work as long as the conditions are met. Now, can I promise you that it's gonna be perio problem free? No, you might have a perio defect. Can't control that, okay? Obviously, if you're doing it too rapidly, that can happen, so we don't wanna go nuts. I'm gonna go ahead and reactivate this every few weeks in office. It will take, depending on the angulation, four to nine months, four to 12 months. I mean, it's gonna take a little bit while. Once you get it up to the point of the height of contour, you can go ahead and start your spacer technique and you're pretty much home free at that point. Your money, you're good. And you can take this dumb thing off and the patient will be really happy. Yes, this is uncomfortable. Yes, it pokes the patient, but you know what? It's a heck of a lot more comfortable than having a TAD. Um, and it's a heck of a lot cheaper and a heck of a lot healthier for the patient.
that's pretty much it. So I highly recommend it. And cost is, is cheap. You can probably make this, have this made at a lab for $100, $200. Spacers are one penny. Um, very easy, a lingual arch, if you have this soldered on it, is probably 100. So we're talking less than $200 to get this done, um, even without braces. All right, thanks so much.